All right, guys, I'm going to go over post study guide. Um, it's pages 9 and 10. There is no 11. I got things all mixed up when I um, I counted one. I think I counted page 8 or page 7 twice. So just pages 9 and 10, and that's going to finish it, the end of the study guide. So yay, after this, we're done with the study guide. Um, so that's it. A lot of these on the study guide, we've had fire starters to kind of explain that. So um, I'm going to kind of go over this one right now. So number 40... Uh, Two pairs of parallel lines intersect to form a parallelogram, as shown. So, um, all M and N, or M is parallel to N, so we know that M. So we know that M is parallel to N, and we know that K is parallel to L. Right? That means like K and L, like there's different transversals. So M would be a transversal that cuts K and L. Um, so. That's given. Number two, what's the next thing which we can say? Um, we, if you want to go right in order, you could say angle one is congruent to angle two. Now the reason is alternate interior angles are congruent. So, so you're gonna put alternate interior angles are congruent. And remember, when we did this, I always wanted you to put two parallel lines cut by a transversal because you have to have that. All right. Um, the next, so that one we took care of. One is congruent to three. I don't know if we know that yet. Um, so we might be able to see that. So I know that I can say angle two is congruent to angle three. So angle two is congruent to angle three. And why is that? Because corresponding angles are congruent. So. Remember, that's because we have the two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Um, I don't remember anything about opposite angles being congruent. We say vertical angles are congruent, not necessarily opposite. Um, and I don't see anything with the exterior, so I obviously think that's... Now, I guess you could always say angle 1 is congruent to angle 1. You could say um, that something's always congruent to itself, but I don't see a reason for that. So that's the only reason I'm going to get rid of that. So the last thing I'm going to say is angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. And this is called um, the transitive property. So transitive means that, like, if I like if transitive, say like if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. That's kind of the transitive property. So there is a transitive property of angles. So we have a thing that says angle one is the same as angle two. So an angle two is the same as angle three, so we can actually just say angle one and angle number three. So we're gonna say transitive property. All right. Think of it as like a transition, that's kinda of why they use that word. Um, so number um, forty one, remember we talked about a lot about Sokotoa. So it's tangent of A, so I got it remember A is your theta, right? That means this guy is the opposite, and the guy next to it right here is the adjacent. So it's important that you know that. Um, so remember, TOA is for tangent, and the O over A means we have tangent of A is going to be opposite, which is 24, all over my adjacent, which is 10. So it's going to be equal to 2.4, which is D. All right. So D is the answer for that one. All right, 42, really easy. Just find the order of pairs. So E, you go right one, down five. So it's one, negative five. F, you go left two, up one. So it's negative two, one. Uh, H, you're going to go right 5, up 5, so H is going to be 5, 5. If you have like a 4.5 or something like that because it looks a little bit different to you, that's fine. Um, I'm just like, for example, G, if you gave me a whole number answer for G, that's fine. To me, it looks like it's going to be 3.5, um, negative 4. So I went 3.5. 
just because to me it looks like a half, negative 4. If you did um, something different, if you had like negative, oh, it's left. I don't know why I didn't put a negative. I went to the left, so remember, left makes x negative, down makes y negative, up means y is positive, right means x is positive. All right. Quadrant, all right, so this is one, this is two, it goes counterclockwise, three. Oh, I don't know, I, I wrote three <laughs> wrong with Roman numerals. Three, sorry, and that's better, four. All right, so um, E is in quadrant four. So whenever you write the quadrants, you always use Roman numerals, so don't use the number four, use the Roman numeral, the I and the V. Um, F is quadrant two. So I use the two eyes next to each other. Uh, G is three. And then H is one. Now, um, whenever we do stuff like this, um, you should always know that in quadrant one, X is positive, Y is positive. Quadrant two, X is negative y is positive. Um, in quadrant 3, both are negative. Quadrant 4, um, x is positive. And y is negative. So remember, x, y is how we write an order pair. So even without the graph, I could do, I could determine the quadrant just based off looking at the order pair. All right. All right. So um, I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but this is kind of how I was thinking how to do it. So what I did first is I closed this off. I just imagine that's now a, and I, I just, I could do that. Because um, these are parallel lines, so I can say that there's going to be, that I could have, a, I could connect that to make a closed figure. Now I have a one, two, three, four, five-sided shape, right? Now, what we found out is that triangles have 180 degrees, Squares or quadrilaterals, so three sides have 180 degrees on the inside. Four has a 360. And then five is actually going to increase by another 180. Give me 540. All right. Um, there's like a, there's a math property that says that. So that property says like if you take the number of sides minus two, and then multiply it by 180. You find out how many how many degrees are inside the angles. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I know that this is 128 degrees because that's a vertical angle. So the red the red 128 shows up because of vertical angles. Um, this right here, I don't know what these are. We'll say x and y, but I know together. The equal 180 because that's the rule about remember same side interior angles all right so I know X and Y is 180 so there's my X and Y I know that the red I know I have 128 I know that this 117 is there so that's a four of these angles. So I know this missing spot. I can find this missing spot right here. So that's what I'm finding right now. So I'm going to add up this guy, this guy. These two are 180. And I'm going to find this missing spot. And then I'm going to use a little bit of math after that. So like I said, there might be a faster way to do it. This is just kind of what I was thinking just off of, off of looking at it. So we're going to say plus question mark equals 540. So 180 plus 128 plus 117. So 180 plus 128 plus 117 so 180 plus 128 plus 117 gives me 425 now we'll call it M equals 540 so I subtract 425 from both sides so 540 minus 425 is gonna give me 115 so M equals 115 so right there is 115 degrees remember 115 so angle 1 is going to be 180 minus 115 because they are a linear pair. So this guy right here and this guy together make up a line. So I do 180 minus 115 gives me 65 degrees. So the measurement 
of angle one equals 65 degrees. So this is a pretty tough one, um, I think, because you would have, the big idea here is you would had to re, you had to know how to figure out how you would had to know one that you can make a fig, closed figure. So we did that. You had to know there was five sides, and that five sides figures have um, 440, 540 degrees inside. So there's a formula that says that. That's how we know that triangles have 180, um, rec, uh, rectangles, quadrilaterals, anything has 300 and um, 60, and so forth and so forth. So like a, a hexagon with six sides would would have 720. All right. So and that's it for 44. All right. So. I have to find the slope for WX and, w and YZ. So we know how to do that. So remember, slope is equal to M, and that's Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. All right, so now we need to know is parallel lines have equal slope. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal. That's a fancy way to say together they multiply. I spelled reciprocal wrong. Um, they multiply to give you negative one. So perpendicular lines have opposite. It's called opposite reciprocal, which basically means the product equals negative one. So if I multiply the two slopes together and they give me negative one, they are um, perpendicular. And if anything else would be anything beyond that, so um, any other relationship. All right. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to find w and x. So I'm going to find use these two to find the slope. So the slope, uh, I'm going to say m1. You could put like w m w x, but I'm going to put slope 1 is, I'm going to say this is y2, so I'm going to do 7 minus negative 1, all over 5 minus 3, so I get m1 equals 8 over 2, which is 4, all right? Now, I'm going to use m2, I'm going to say negative 8 minus negative 6, all over 4 minus 7. So negative 8 minus negative 6, that's like adding. So I end up with negative 2 over 4 minus 7 is negative 3. So I get m2 equals 2 thirds. So I compare 2 thirds and I compare 4. They are not the same. They are not negative. They are not opposite reciprocals. So that means it's neither. And that's going to finish. Um, that's going to finish the post study game.